All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is FNGR from Limbo Podcast. Uh, joining with me today, my co-hosts, Aeon of Dreams. Hello, bitches. How are you? Leaky Dusty Rhodes. Apples. And Corpulent Brony. Hello, everybody. And with us today is a man who needs no introduction. I'm not going to go over the top of this. Mr. Brony Curious, Tommy Oliver. Yeah. Oh, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> so, who wants to start off? Tom, you, you, you said to, we could call you anything we wanted. Uh, I, I, I wondered if you actually face, uh, fashioned your look after a certain... You, you follow Marvel Comics at all, right? Yes. Did you try and, uh, try and resemble Black Tom Cassidy? No, that was not intentional. Oh, okay. I was going to ask if I could call you Mr. Cassidy, but we'll move it's on. Just a happy accident. Yeah. He <laughs> well, seemed to rock. Really... No, go ahead. It's cool. I, I was going to say, if you were really going to base him off of someone, he reminds me of that guy on the communist posters because of the hat. <laughs> What, Lenin? <laughs> no. <laughs> che? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm you didn't know who Che is. was? Seriously? <laughs> yeah, I can't think of his name. I know the. I remember faces, not names, okay? No, it's fine. You're not the first person to say that, actually. Back when I had my long hair and I wore the hat, it did look very similar. And did you ever take a red and white picture just for sake of, like, satire or something? Or humor? No, I'm not that creative, unfortunately. Oh, you, you, you could have had the obey in the background there. Exactly. But <laughs> didn't do it. Yeah. What, what's going on with the hat? I haven't seen the hat in a while. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't, I, the reason I wore the hat was because I just wanted a way to people to know who I was at BernieCon. Because at the time, I didn't do any videos on camera. And I'm an attention whore because I have no self-esteem. So I need external recognition in order to make me feel good about myself. So I just found the hat, which just happened to be one on eBay that looked exactly like the one I had drawn. So I'm just like, Destiny. And I bought it. When I put it on and I had my long hair, I looked like someone out of the Middle Ages. Like scruffy, like unkempt and all. But now that I have shorter hair, it just looks really stupid. I mean, it always looks... But I mean, even that's kind of pushing it a little bit. I do, I do like your videos where you do the live action stuff. You, you have a really good camera presence. Thank you. I try. I mean, I'm probably going to start doing more of that now that I have like a decent camera and like semi good lighting. Yeah, so. I, th- I mean, like if I mean, like Digi tries to do those on camera things where he sits there all scruffy and is dirty. We're not trying to pick a fight with anybody. <laughs> <We're> not, <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But you, you set up a nice background and you get yourself looking nice and you're you doing a good job. Yeah. I, I meant to ask uh, a while ago, uh you don't have the video up anymore where you used to kinda like do kind of like a technology thing. Your video was something about like some kind of phone service. Yeah. Yeah, uh, did you ever consider like going back to doing that? Like, uh, the, we were like sh- shipping and plugging. I thought it was kind of like a neat little, uh, feature, a new look for your channel. Yeah, I mean, actually, the reason I didn't do any more of those is because, like, the reaction to it was kind of negative. Everyone thought I was, it was like a paid product placement. I was like, no, like, it's free. It's not a paid product placement. I just thought it was kind of cool and I wanted to share it. But I have, I'm kind of working on a new channel that I want to start. And I don't know if it's going to replace the one I have now or it's going to be in addition to it because, you know, I have so many videos I need to do now anyways. Part of it's going to be reviewing technology and like looking at, at products and stuff that I personally use or am interested in, uh, in addition to like other, like, I read tech blogs religiously. Like, I know way too much about this stuff and I just never talk about it because, you know, the channel I built right now really has nothing to do with tech at all. So I just feel like it's out of place. And I'm one of those people who needs everything like super organized. So I'm just like, I have to just talk about cartoons on this channel. As soon as I deviate from it, like, it gets too cluttered and then I get mad. So I don't know. What kind of technology are you, in, are you interested in, mostly? Cell phones are cracked to me. I've owned over 20 cell phones in the last four years. Wow. So, yeah, it's bad. Um, How many? 20. That's Ooh, five a year? Like the, something like that. Wow. Um, just yeah, in I, the last the last six months, I've purchased three phones. So. Holy cow. Yeah. Are you doing Most something of, where you have to keep scratching these phones? <laughs> no, I'm just screwing around. I don't know. I've had the same. I've had, uh, in the past, Six years, I've had two cell phones, and both of them have been base model Samsung Galaxy. <laughs> Whatever I can get with the contract. Yeah. yeah I, was, I, I, had, I used to have the S2. I got that back when it was top of the line, and then I went to go out, and I wanted to get the S5 for my new phone, but that was just too much. And then I saw the, uh, I have the Galaxy Core now. Honestly, I really can't see a difference. It's a perfectly good phone. I like it. Say, uh, Tommy, uh, I, I caught one of your uh, Patreon videos. Again, I, I don't know if it got a negative response and I didn't pay attention. I just, I liked it myself. Your uh, review for the Green Lantern? You yeah. seem like you'd be really good at, like, branching out. Like, if MLP died tomorrow, I think you'd be able to pick that up lickety-split. 
when are you going to consider like uh maybe are you going to do like a separate channel for that or is it just something you're going to feature on your main or i mean the idea right now because i've been i've been mulling over this for like the last like six months trying to figure out exactly how i want to position everything i think i would just take the channel i have right now and keep it reviews because i'm already i've already done a bunch of like non-pony stuff on there i did like one on over the garden wall and bravest warriors and uh i want to start doing more than that because i want to start making the channel like kind of more professional and and higher quality content now that I have better gear. So reviews and stuff would go there for, like, cartoons. But anything outside of that, like the technology thing we were talking about, or, like, every time I do something art-related on this channel, people are like, who did the art for it? And I'm just like, uh, indeed. <laughs> Nobody knows. You know, uh, Tom, I, I think this is the perfect time to ask this, or probably jump in the gun here. Uh, Anthony C. claims you're working on an animation that's kind of hush-hush. Any hints for us? I mean, I, I released a, a teaser three or four weeks ago on my channel. It lies somewhere between a motion comic and an animation because I can't actually animate, but it's going to be part animation, motion comic sort of thing that's going to be on YouTube, and then it's also going to have an Ask Blog component, and it's going to be laying the groundwork for a big kind of fantasy world that I'm trying to create that'll be for all my stories I do going forward because my main thing is telling stories like that's why I review things so passionately and so critically much to the chagrin of many people is because I'm trying to figure out how what I like about stories what I don't like about them so when I make my own stories I can kind of come back to all that information and make sure I do the best thing possible. At the end of the day, if I had to like choose one thing to do right now, I could only do that for the rest of my life. It'd be telling stories and doing like visual storytelling in some fashion. So that's a big project I want to do. I have like probably like five years worth of stories planned out for that project. So yeah, so that'll be starting hopefully like sometime this year. Thing, but I'm assuming this is not going to be a pony thing. No, it actually started out as a pony thing, but it's it just deviated from the source material so much. I just like I'm trying to like have like fantasy and goblins and monsters and things in a pony story. I'm just like, and eh, it's not even. So we're looking kind of LOL, uh, Lord of the Rings ish kind of possible. Sort of. My big motivation behind this this world I'm creating is that it's going to be very much fantasy based, almost traditional fantasy. But I'm going to make sure that it's not like a world in chaos or the world on the brink of war or like. One chosen one figures out his destiny and changes the course of everything. I want to be like, he, oh, holy, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's like it's just like like what are all the other people doing? You know, like I really enjoy slice of life stories. It's kind of one of the things I like so much about MLP is that like it's this fantasy world, but there's like kind of ho hum things going on, and that's something I've always liked about the show and just in general. Like I want to explore more of that. So going forward, like this world's gonna be like very personal problems set against a fantastic backdrop. So the main character in, in the story I'm working on, you know, she's motivated by, like, very personal things, just like, I want to do this. And at no point is it ever going to be like, she discovers her true potential <laughs> to become ruler of the world. No, no, no. Like, the world is pretty much... <laughs> her full potential. I don't feel any different. There wasn't that much there. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. Just normal people doing normal things in a fantastic world, I guess. That's kind of what I want to explore with this universe that's kind of slowly coming together. Oh, that's probably... Uh, like, okay. okay. I was asking about your uh, logo on Twitter, because I, I saw a couple other people asking about that, like if it stood for anything. Yes, um, that's kind of part of the whole other project I was just talking about. So oh, okay. It is it is a it's a secret right now, but I will reveal it hopefully within the next couple months to understand what Certainly. it means. We'll keep an eye out for it. Um, I'll make it very obvious when I when I announce it. So. Oh okay. When when you when you feed us like little cookie crumbs, I'll, I'll be able to throw it all together in one video so I'll have something to do that week. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Albert, uh can I ask you some questions as because I know you're into creative writing. I I'm sort of a creative writing student, so I don't know, I figured these came to mind. Um, there's something I noticed with a lot of creative writing students, and myself included, where we go into writing a story, and we kind of had to do it, like, really fast, because, you know, we only had a semester. But it comes up where you think you have the story all set out in your head, everything is perfect, but then there's this glaring contradiction that everyone else noticed, but not the person who wrote it. Has that happened with you, and if so, how do you get around it? Um, I think the best way to get around problems like that is to have pre-readers or have someone look at your work beside yourself, because you're always going to have that problem where it all makes sense to you, but not to anyone else. Because, I mean, anytime you write, it's never 100% what you're thinking. It's always, like, enough to get the idea across. And despite the pieces coming together for you, it's not always going to on the other side. Um, like, a good example is that I wrote a story on fan fiction called What You Meet to Me, and there was one point where I was going to have this whole chapter... It was going to be like a flashback. And I told my friend about it. He's like, you're not having a flashback in your story. 
no, I refuse. That's terrible. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> so we came up with this whole oh, other have- idea for chapter five. Well, he's he's a writer too, so he's just like, that's like a cardinal sin. I'm not letting you do it. It's your first story, but I'm not going to let you get away with that. So, so we came up with a whole new concept for the fifth chapter, and it became, became, I think, the best chapter in the entire book out of it. So, I mean, I just bounce my ideas off other people, um, which is, it's difficult because sometimes if I t- ask too many people, I'll get too many conflicting ideas, and then I have to make an executive decision at that point. It's like, well, this didn't really help at all. But if you just like some trusted people you know that have good taste, or at least taste that's reflective of what you're trying to do, and you run it off against them, they can usually catch things that you don't. So I don't know. I mean, that's that's usually what I do is is I just have another pair of eyes look at it to make sure there's nothing there that I didn't notice. So yeah. I think that did it turn out that it was a dream the whole time? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's the only way I understood it, right? <laughs> oh, and uh, did you start every chapter with the weather? Yes. Okay. Excellent. You have done everything and perfectly. S- speaking of a uh, dream being the whole time, I have kind of a difficult question here. Uh, for school, did you ever like did it become a sinking suspicion at one point or other whether you thought I'm I'm concerned my diploma isn't really going to pay off? And if so, what time would that have been? Uh, two weeks before graduation. Oh, <laughs> oh. Are you saying he's not doing anything with his life? Is that what you're trying to say? Hey, hey, I'm I'm in hot. Right. I, I, I mean, I, yeah, I can, yeah. Let's compare debts. <laughs> How bad is yours? <laughs> How bad is school got you? Uh, like forty grand. Jesus. Holy, sh- I got twenty-two. Oh. Damn, I got ten. <laughs> you win, Peter. You're the least. <laughs> Yay! Don't worry, you'll, you'll catch it up. If it's not school debt, I'm still like nine grand deep into paying off my truck. Yeah. Um. I think the thing I'm doing right now is I'm doing income-based repayment on my loans. So they like zeroed out what the biggest one, the federal loan, which is great. And it's like if you stay poor for 25 years, we'll forgive the entire loan for you. And I'm just like, I have a game plan. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you, education system. I didn't pay shit. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait till different people get in office. That'll go away. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can only hope. What are, let's, let's go to something positive here. What's your uh, happy happiest memories from school, then? Happiest memories from school. Um, Let's see. I met my first girlfriend in college. Not my first girlfriend. My first real girlfriend, I guess, was in college. That was fun. In terms of, like, school itself, there was one class uh, where we had a substitute teacher. Because the graphic because I was, went to school for graphic design, and the graphic design professor retired the year I got there. So I shuffled through a lot of teachers for the first couple of years I was in school until I found a new replacement. And one of the substitutes, everybody hated, but I loved her because she was the only teacher who actually taught things. Like, the program in my school was really bad, but I was just too dumb to realize that. So I only had one teacher that actually sat down and was like, I'm going to teach you things. It was a typography class, and I learned all about type and, like, how to design with type and what to look for when you're doing laying down typography in your designs. And I knew nothing about this going in. And by the time I was done, like, I, I felt, like, really confident in those kinds of skills. And it was the, the only class in, like, four years of, of art classes where they're actually like, here's a textbook. We're going to sit down and read things. Everything else is just like, here's an assignment. Do it. Talk to me in two weeks. And it was completely worthless because I could have done that by myself for free. In fact, I learned more during the summers than I would in school. But this one class was great. But everyone hated her because she made you do work. And then she didn't get the job. And I was like, well, that was a waste. But that was a really good class. And then I learned all about philosophy in in college. I didn't know anything about it going in, but I ended up minoring in it because I enjoyed the classes so much. Yes. Uh, yeah. Which is which has made me hate the world because now I just over examine everything until I realize the hypocrisy of like the entire foundations of society and now I just hate everything. So, so you took so you took the red pill and you realized the blue pill would have been the better choice. Is that what Yeah, you're I should have just given myself a partial lobotomy. What was I thinking? I should have been so happy right now. Uh. So he's I, I like to think I like to think that alcohol was invented by a by a, an intelligent cynical person. I wouldn't be too surprised that to be the case. Some um, intelligent fellow in Ireland. It's <laughs> like I don't like this. <laughs> um, so you did um I think it was you did, did you did a video about um the role of analysis in the Brony fandom and and um, whether or not it still has a um a place. Was that was that you? Um, I did a video called Did Analysis Damage the Fandom where I kind of talked about yes. the effects of, of criticizing the show. So I don't know if that's the video you were talking about. Yeah, that's the one I, I was actually looking at the other day. Yeah. I, I could comment from there, but uh, Corp, did you have something from there you wanted to go with? Um, well, what I was curious about was... Uh, were you, you curious about... <laughs> We're gonna do that all night, aren't what we? What I was oh, wondering, yeah, we... what I was wondering <laughs> was, do you do you believe that the uh, 
the the thoughts you had when you put together that video i i i know i saw you got a lot of response on that uh did any of the responses maybe change the way you thought about it or, or do you still sort of have the same opinion as you did when you went into that video and, and posted it I mean, I guess when I posted, I was I was more trying to pose a question than answer it. I know a lot of people assumed that, like, by watching the video, maybe I didn't make it clear enough that, like, I was like, oh, yeah, this definitely happened. We screwed up. But I don't really know. I think it depends from person to person if that happened to them or not. You can't really make a blanket statement about it. For a lot of people, and they've let me know in the comments, like, my videos ruined their lives. <laughs> like, oh, <that's> horribly. Like... <laughs> for, oh. for some reason, my oh. opinion is so sacred that it just destroyed them, but Tom, other people Tom, don't care. Tom, if if I may, I, this is the part I was ready to compare to. I was like, you know, if you, you switched your venue, like, 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 let's suppose, like, you went to, I don't know, like, the escapist, like, Ben Yahtzee, do you think that all his fans, like, thank him for destroying all those games? <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. That's the whole thing. Like, it's a, it's an individual basis. You know, like I can watch, you know, Yasi's videos, and when he like rips apart Mass Effect Two, I'm just like, it's kind of right, but I don't give a shit. You know, yeah. other people, I guess, yeah. don't have that cognitive ability, and to that, I pity them. Well, that oh, seems so almost. Tommy uh, Oliver. Oh, um, good. I have to, I have to ask, on behalf of the Church of Super Happy Fun People, um, <laughs> being the head of the evil Illuminati of Analysis Bronies and our secret <laughs> conspiracy to ruin happiness and fun in the fandom do we have any further plans to ruin happiness and fun in the fandom my our sacred over are you asking for our marching orders yes yes i am okay. yes i mean season five is right around the corner you've been stocking up your ammo right we're gonna fucking rain down word bullets of doom upon these people so it's yeah, been, it's been right. over a year and everyone's gonna be like yes we finally have more ponies it's be like shit worst episode ever and then just toss <laughs> everyone's hopes and dreams so, bas so basically, come March, you're just going to execute Order 66? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Who said March? That's, that's, yeah. how I'll start, that's how I'll start the video. <laughs> and then just like have all these like ponies just getting sniped. It'll be great. <laughs> 360 no-scope. Yeah, I had a, yeah, Lauren Faust would mysteriously die in her apartment. <laughs> no, again, I'm I'm not really necessarily... Well, you could take this as argumentative, where you were sitting there kind of like ragging on like horse fame or something like that. What 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 get, makes like I don't know like a, a, a famous YouTube gamer? What makes PewDiePie more entitled than say I don't know someone who's horse famous to what they have? I don't know. I mean, millions of more subscribers. <laughs> Is that all? If you play the numbers game, then yeah, I mean, raw numbers will determine pretty much anything. I mean, I try not to do that. Um, I try and, like, listen. To, I mean, that's why I don't watch PewDiePie. And, oh, I, and yeah. I watch, you know, watch him Cloud Shooting sing. Country, who is criminally under underviewed, because his, his points are always fantastic. I appreciate what people have to say, not what people think of what they have to say. So... Oh yeah, Cloud I don't great. know. I mean, some people do, like, look at that number. And I, I guess, like I said, it's an easy way to to gauge quality when you have so many people vying for your attention. You know, I'm just like, well, that is 50, that one has 10, that one must be better. I don't feel like sifting through it myself, I'm just going to make the choice. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just, like, convenience. You know, it's more convenient to just, like, submit to the numbers and use that as opposed to, like, having to critically think. There's a, a certain video of yours that you seem to have a bit of fun with. Uh, your response to Kimmy Sparkles, I loved it. Have you ever heard anything back from Sure Clap Pones for that? Are you friends with anybody over there? I don't really, I don't know them all that well. We talked at BronyCon 2013 for a little bit because we all ended up in the same lobby of the hotel because we're all in the same hotel, so we were talking for a little bit. But in terms of like a direct response for that, I didn't really hear anything. I think Kimmy Sparkle responded in the comments saying like, like, you know, try not to disagree with me next time. That's all. You know? <laughs> like role playing the role that I would kind of assigned to her. Yeah. Like, thanks for being, like, inspired by me and shit. Like, if you dig long enough, you can find it. But that's, like, all I really got in terms of response. It's funny how, like, a ton of people didn't get that it was a joke. It was, like, too subtle. So they're just like, dude, she was joking. Calm down. Well, it seems like a lot of people didn't get that Kimmy Sparkle is a joke. but Yeah, there was, like, two levels of didn't get it. It was pretty crazy. I just added to the depth by by just being so vague about it. How many levels deeper? The top's still spinning? The inception. I don't know. I, I, stopped, I stopped reading the comments. It could be, like, 15 levels deep by now. Who knows? Oh, nice. oh um, since you mentioned BronyCon, do you have any BronyCon horror stories? Horror stories? Yeah, anything, like, you know, like, anything going, like, ballistic out there. Anything you know, fun or interesting. In terms of ballistic, I don't think anything like horrible happened. The weirdest thing that happened at BronyCon is that when they had the uh, the dress up event last year, and I don't remember what it's called, the gala thing that I think they do, Saber, Spark, and AC Race Bass wanted me to follow them in there to record them because that's when Saber had the dress on and everything, and he had to go and, and dance because he had made a, a Twitter promise. So some guy let me borrow his like like jacket thing because they wouldn't let you in unless you were dressed well. 
So I did that. I didn't know that Gabe had gone in there too, Black Griffin, so he was recording. So I was there for no reason. I'm like, well, I hate being in here. I'm really uncomfortable. I want to leave. And then some dude like wouldn't let me leave. He's like, dude, you need to dance. I'm like, dude, I don't dance, man. Fuck that. I got things to do. And he wouldn't let me leave until I danced with like his friend. And it was really awkward. And I was just like, it was like the creepiest thing ever. Is this person Kevin Bacon? <laughs> I was I Nicolas Cage. If it was Kevin Bacon. If it was Kevin Bacon, I totally would have rolled with it. It would have been fantastic. <laughs> no, I just would imagine. That's the Bernie Con moment. I'd be like, first of all, you're here. Second of all, but no, it was just some 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 random dude. I don't know. It was really off putting, and I was just like, I couldn't get out of there fast enough at that point. That was the weirdest thing that ever happened to me at Bernie Con. Was some guy made me dance, and I can't dance to save my life. So how many cult meetings have you been to with him so far? Uh, like twenty. <laughs> oh, nice. So, you're still in contact. See, oh. dude, I can imagine just you with this deadpan look on your face, just flinging your limbs around just that to kill time. That was pretty much what happened. You you imagine correct. I usually, I'm, I'm more of a, when I dance, it's more of a Commander Shepard kind of thing. That's what I said. That's literally what I said. I was, just <laughs> like, I was like, dude, I can't dance. He's like, everyone can dance. I'm like, no, I make Commander Shepard look good. Let me get out of here, please. <laughs> Well, and since, didn't get the reference, which sucked. Since we're talking about like dancing, what's your favorite drink? <laughs> since that might help you get you there. <laughs> I actually don't drink that often, believe it or not. Yeah, I don't. I don't even drink enough to have a favorite drink. So. Oh, okay. I know it's pretty sad. Like the, I usually, whenever we go out for like my friends go out and get beers or something, I usually either not drink or I'll just have like a Coors Light or something just to appease them. But <laughs> that's about it. There is a no. Go ahead. Yeah. Lights pop. <laughs> Or soda. Yeah. So um, 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 are you still? Do you still like the uh, the the marshmallow pony? What what's its name? Uh, <laughs> um, I didn't show you the pasta video, did uh, I? There, Corporal. You don't want to get smacked around, do you? Uh, Tommy, I believe he's <laughs> trying to shit talk best pony. Uh, I know. No, Twilight I know. Sparkle. I would never deign to, to shit talk Twilight Sparkle. Yeah, that's you. okay. Sorry. I mean, if you have, if you want to have like you know barbaric taste, that's fine. I mean, I'm not going to fault you for it. We're all. We're all on our own path when it comes to discovering the true best pony. You know, yeah, it's yeah. not there yet. Okay, I, well, I've waiting. opened myself to the magic of friendship and okay. the princess thereof. All right. Well, I'm not insecure about liking best pony, so I'm not going to start an argument. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I usually ask. Uh, uh, what? what yeah, why? Does. Why do you think? Uh, why do you think uh, Rarity is best pony though? Like, what? What attracts you? Well, not attracts oh, you, but citation. What? See video. <laughs> well, I know. I made a whole video. <laughs> well, yeah, and there might be some people listening to the podcast who haven't seen the video. So, the I, I, grand high pope of Rarity for crying out loud, Corporal. <laughs> well, this gives him a wonderful soapbox. Yes. To extol the virtues of Rarity. I think Rarity, I mean, Rarity is the type of person that if I met in real life, I'd probably, like, not get along with at all. Uh, so the fact that there's, like, this wall of fiction prevents me from knowing her as a real person probably, like, helps my perception. But I just think that her character is very in-depth. I think a lot of the, 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 the conflicts she faces throughout the show are relatable, but also mature in, in a way, you know? Uh, especially uh, the Art of the Dress kind of conflict with, like, her friends kind of shitting on her dresses and stuff and like that feeling of insecurity and wanting to please your friends at the expense of like your own kind of taste and, and, and comfort. Um, they're very real problems that can be applied not only like, directly in the situation they're illustrated in that episode, but also in, in a more general sense in a lot of situations that people deal with. I don't know. I even, even like the key episode for her when, when it was like someone basically plagiarizing and taking advantage of her it was like a really just, a complex subject that kind of went above and beyond the Call of Duty for the age demographic that the show talks about. So I think she's a very well-developed character. Her conflicts are always very interesting and, and can apply directly. They, they, they don't put kitty goggles on for her. And, um, you know, I just think Tabitha St. Germain does a great job with her voice acting. Whenever she, like, you know, has a fit of drama, it's always very entertaining just on a surface level. So there's She's really a nothing wonderful voice her. actress. And, like, in simple ways, what she did with her voice and trying to sound like Applejack while sounding like Rarity, like, blew my yeah, pants this off. Yeah, like, how do you do that? It's like, yeah. again, going back to, like, the Inception thing, it's like levels of, like, voicing going on there at once. Yeah. I think I think you can get along with Rarity. You just gotta give her some gems. Bitches love gems. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm forty thousand dollars in student loan debt. Yeah, I was gonna get there for him. <laughs> if he had some gems, he wouldn't have forty thousand dollars in student yeah. loans, and that would be. Well, I don't know. I don't know if he really is the rarity fan we think he is. That marshmallow pussy might be worth it. Uh, <laughs> let's let's think here. You're probably going to be, or I, I've I've been waiting to to get the the flip side of this. What are your thoughts on the uh, closing of everything? And, and the conventions, like I know they did a lot of convention streaming, especially early on, but. 
most of the cons that I was interested in ended up going to. I mean, I, I know Draft actually pretty well. We we talk a lot. I know a lot of the guys who were on it at EFN. And just because, like, I know uh, SaberSpark and Paleo pretty well and they were part of EFN, I kind of just met them through Osmosis or whatever you want to call it, or association. So that, that I mean, I know the guys and they're all, I know EFN and, and, and specifically Draft got their name dragged through the mud a lot, but I think a lot of it was kind of overblown just from my perspective of talking to the guy and knowing who he is. So with them shutting down, I mean, they're moving on to do other things and I can appreciate that and respect that. So I wasn't, like, you know, heartbroken when they went away, but at the same time, um, I respected what they did, uh, despite the fact that other people did not. So, no, I, I, I got it. Well, well once... Rob, when they shut down, like, did he ever tell you why he decided to take the channel off? I think it was because I think they did. They did a live stream after they made the announcement, and I tuned in for some of it. And it was sounding just like their big thing that they were doing was was streaming conventions, and conventions didn't want that service anymore. I think the fandom's so big now that they, they didn't need the advertising in that fashion. Like people knew what conventions were, and a lot of people who go or have been to other cons before, so they know the rodeo, so to speak. And between that and the fact that, like, I know they were just kind of ready to, to move on and do, do something not related to the fandom and kind of, like, find their own path, I guess, and, and do their own thing, which I can totally understand, because I'm kind of doing the same thing with my big project right now. So I think when you've been in the fandom for that long, and you you're a creatively minded person or just, you know, business minded or entrepreneur venture minded, whatever you want to call it. You eventually want to try and see what you can do on your own without without having to fall back on like a fandom or a pre-established community. You want to create something truly yours. And I think that in addition to like, you know, getting all the flack that they did, because they got a lot of flack all the time. Uh, it's just, it's disheartening, especially when you're doing all this work and, and, you know, people cannot appreciate it, but like the fact that you have to like throw it in your face is really annoying. So I think what if I you... was going to say what it was, I think it's probably the, the backlash they were getting, plus the fact that just their main like bread and butter wasn't really wanted by the community anymore. So it left them with nothing really to do. What, what do you think? Why do you think he got that backlash? Cause every time I've ever asked, I've I always heard like someone would say, I heard he did this to so and so. Oh, I heard he screwed over this person. Like exactly. I never. Exactly. All of it's hearsay, which I, I've never really been too comfortable with buying into. I've talked to Draft before. He's a good, he's a good guy. You know, we've, we've, I've had lunch with him before at conventions and stuff and we've hung out like for the better part of the day just doing stuff. And, and he's not a bad dude at all. I know a lot of people got upset when they found out about the contracts that they signed with conventions, but I think that was totally reasonable. Again, they were doing this service and it needed money and they, they had to like say that they were buying this like bandwidth to, to do all the live streaming. And I know like Ponyville Live was upset with them because they weren't sharing the bandwidth, but again, they had bought the bandwidth. And that's why they were using it exclusively and things like that. Oh yeah, and I'm then, told it's a nightmare to, for bandwidth in the cons. Oh yeah, it's, it's terrible. And then I know before that, even before they got into like a fight with Ponyville Live and all those other streaming guys, before that it was him and Sathisto didn't like each other <laughs> for whatever reason. And that was like that whole grudge started before I even joined the fandom. So I don't know the deets on that, but uh, I don't know. I, I guess think a big problem with Final the wrong Draft. Way. I think a big problem with Final Draft is that a lot of the people. Who, well, a lot, a lot of people who like knew him knew that it was really easy to push his buttons, and that kind of like it made it made him out sometimes to be a little oh, bit definitely. of to look kind of like an asshole. Like I remember we're well, you we're, get big enough, Leaky. Everybody becomes a target. That might no, just I be. Know, it. I understand that. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. Tr- I'm, I'm not doesn't handle uh, attacks I'm, very I'm, well because like there there will be times like. It's especially like last year when I just be on Twitter and then it's like four or five posts from draft in a row, like going off on something or just like taking subtle jabs out of nowhere just to vent his frustration. And I'm like, you know, if you're going to vent your frustration, you got to do it on Skype to somebody who actually like understands the situation. Putting it publicly is just going to paint the raw perception of you. <laughs> um, well, you were kind of glitching, but I wanted to ask a question sort of along these lines. If Tommy's still there, I don't know. I am still here. Okay, good. Yeah. What are, what are your thoughts though about the different like news organizations we have right now in the fandom like um, uh, Equestria Daily, Derpy Hooves News, and Horse News? Is there a particular one you go to for pony news, or you just sort of like let the grapevine on Twitter or something tell you what's going on? Is there is there something you know anything you'd like to say about any of that? Um, I mean, I know there's a lot of, of different ones. Early on, when I first got into the fandom, I went to Equestria Daily a lot because that was really the only one that was established. I'd gone to Derpy Hooves News a few times, but they were still really small and starting out and there wasn't like as much articles being posted i don't know if it's changed now uh in terms of like i haven't gone on etd or any of those sites probably in the last like eight or nine months just because i've been so busy doing my own work and stuff and i guess like i'm at the point where i'm not like super horse crazy right now Uh, 
I'll just watch the show whenever it comes out. And I mean, I'm on Twitter a lot. So usually, like I said, like it'll pop up on there whenever something big that I need to pay attention to is actually announced. So I haven't missed like a trailer or anything like that. They, they're always showing up in some way. And I mean, now it's like, cause people are always like, you need to do a video on this. Like I get bombarded with messages. Like you need to talk about this. So I mean, last year I tried to like be spoiler free for season four, but that was just impossible. Cause like my inbox would explode every time something came out. So I was like, all right, I guess I'm going to know about all this stuff going in. Have you been I mean, spoiled like, on season five already? I've seen like all the trailers and stuff. So okay. I did a video on on the season five trailer. That's right, I like, saw that. Short little blog. It was yeah. really hard to hear the audio in that one, but I did see it. Oh, when you say uh, spoiler free, when do you watch it? Just live or, or YouTube? Um, watch it on stream. I don't have the hub, so I have to watch it in the stream. Uh, mm-hmm. I usually watch it in a stream as it airs, then I will wait for a download and watch it again, so I can see it in good quality. And that's usually when I like kind of watch it with an analytical mindset, just like, oh, what did I like, what did I not like kind of thing. I always watch the first one just for fun. What was one episode where you watched it, and it's like, you're watching it in the stream at like 7 o'clock or 6 o'clock, whatever, in the morning, and it's like, oh my god, this episode's so awesome, and then you sit down with that analytical mind, and it's like, <laughs> well, this is actually bullshit. What, what, what episode that was like that for you? Oh, man. Rainbow Falls. Which one was it there? I don't even remember which one it was. was... <laughs> What's the list of episodes that were looked at for you? <laughs> I think the the last one that did that was the, the finale for season four. I was like super hype on that when I watched it in stream. And then I watched it again and I started noticing some things. There were a few like that. Yeah. Like you have to live with that in your head all the, all the time. Uh, <laughs> turn the comments off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, comments are fun. Yeah. Are fun. I mean, with, you gotta live with that in your head. Like, I mean, I know what that's like overanalyzing everything and having to live with that. It's like you can't just. Like, sometimes, like, God damn it! why can't I just be stupid and like pretty colors? <laughs> well, I mean, I think something that people don't either don't know or don't understand about the videos I make is that I, I can ignore everything that I talk about in those videos unless, like, I get really impassionately upset with something. The reason I, I nitpick the level I do in those videos is because I feel not doing that would be a waste of time. Because everybody who's watching the show likes it. So to just say this is good, that doesn't provide any sort of service to anybody. It's wasting my time. It's wasting everyone's time who's watching it. Like, they know. They know it's good. I know it's good. I will go out of my way, try and look for things that don't add up or look for things that I don't particularly like. But that's when people are just like, you hate season four. You've hated everything since season two. It's like, no, I'm going out of my way to find things that I don't like personally to make this video have some sort of value. Have you ever tried going out? This is what's good and this is what's bad. Have you ever tried going out of your way to find things that you do like? I mean, I don't have to go out of my way to find things I do like. They're usually pretty obvious. So overall, you like the show, basically, is what you're saying. It, it, it's sort of the opposite of what everyone seems to see. I just, I just spent the last two and a half years of my life doing nothing but exactly. my little pony. I figured <laughs> that would go without saying. That's what I always thought. Like everyone says that everyone, uh, you know, you and uh, Digiro hate the show, but I mean, you guys devote so much time into it. It seems hard to believe that you're all of a sudden hating the show. I don't. I don't really buy like, that. Either. I wasn't doing video reviews on episodes. I would never bring any of this up. Like, yeah. It wouldn't be something I sit down and talk about. I wouldn't be like, ah. it's only because the video is about deconstructing the episode. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing I ever bring up in casual conversation unless someone brings it up to me first, which granted happens a lot of conventions. But if we're just talking, I'm not going to start shipping on the show randomly or saying like, oh, here's the loose part. It's just, it's always positive unless like, you know, putting the analytical glasses on and yeah. going on my way to do it. So, if, so if, I, if I could interpret you, you're saying that you're not Jay Sherman in the room while you're watching MLB. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. I'll, I'll laugh and have a good time with everybody else, especially yeah. on that first viewing, just because like I'm not, I'm not going in there trying to like shut it down. I'm going. You just broke up again, so I totally missed that. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever been in any uh, car accidents? Have you ever totaled a car? I've not totaled a car. Um, I've been in very minor car accidents. Uh, the first one was I was with my friend and. We we stopped in the middle of the road because there were a bunch of ducks crossing the street because it was over a bridge. And then some, like, like kind of ditzy girl slammed into the back, and there was no damage. We just let him go. And then the other time is I yeah, rear-ended somebody uh, while my first day at work. Yeah, it's it's pretty ridiculous. And, like, if you ever, like, take a break and go back, if you're all the training again, like, there was a guy working with me who had, like, worked at Apple for, like, four or five years, but he had stop working there for a couple months to go back in and do the training all over again. Yeah, it's pretty pretty intense. So since Anthony opened the floodgate of... Uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I was well, just about, saying, oh, no. I'm I was just guy, about... I don't know Peter will now ask you car-related questions. What kind yeah. of car do you drive? Uh, I drive a piece of shit car. It's a 97 
uh, Chevy Lumina. Mwah, master <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's just like Princess Luna. See guys, he really is a brony. <laughs> What uh? If if if, if you if you say such a piece of shit, you must have a really shitty engine. I bet you have the the three point one liter, don't you? I have no idea. I don't I don't know anything about cars. Okay, Wiki just his opinion. opinion just went right in the shit around. <laughs> I have I have I have uh, I have it has four wheels and it gets me places. That's about all I know about. Preach on, preach on. Cars. Does it have gas? <laughs> um, sometimes when I have money. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. Otherwise, it doesn't move. Yeah, you have the hose, right? <laughs> you can always get gas. <laughs> so, man, that's that's actually a little bit impressive that you drove it. Where do you, where do you live? Um, I live like in Worcester County, so it's like mm, to get to Boston, it's probably like forty five minutes to an hour and a half, depending on traffic and stuff. I thought you drove like halfway across the country in ninety seven Lumina. I'm like, damn, that's impressive. <laughs> I don't know, dude. If I lived on West Coast, I'd be way more happier than I am right now. East Coast sucks. So, um. <laughs> Uh, people, uh, so uh, you live in Boston, and I know uh, two other famous uh, sort of, not really, uh, YouTube um, brony analyst people live in that area. Uh, which do you prefer, um, Ben or, Ke- or Nate? Dude, they're, they're, they're a pair. You can't break them up. <laughs> actually, the funniest thing, speaking speaking of, of, of TVAP, I actually drove to BronyCon this year, or last year, I should say now, with TVAP. They came, picked me up, we all went down, and I was treated to... A like six hour live episode of TBAP, which oh, is about anime. Oh my That's God. how they talk to each other in real life. It's amazing. <laughs> how I would like the what? best car ride of my life. <laughs> how many times did Keg, how, or how many times did Nate either say the N word or Alpha? <laughs> <laughs> there was, they literally just had like 12 hours of TBAP there and back. It was amazing. Like, I was not like short change on entertainment on that well, ride. I would have never believed that from them. Just hearing it from you, I totally buy it. <laughs> no, no, I heard Ben would sit like for eight hours just on one video with Keg, and that was what came out as one of the reviews, views, or whatever. But yeah, it was like an eight-hour conversation condensed into 15 minutes. <laughs> well, you know Ben I, has the stamina. I, I would do- totally believe that, because like, you'd think that they'd like, knock those out pretty quick, but the way that they talked there, and it was all gold, too. None of it was garbage. They could have posted that entire thing. <laughs> well, uh I, I do have like one. This is like really the last question I have. Uh, I, I asked uh, Cloud this one question. I, I noticed you had a girlfriend. Do you believe in true love? I, I guess. I guess not. I don't think. I don't think we're destined for one person. I. I, I mean, no. I don't. I wouldn't say I believe in true love. I think you can have like a really healthy relationship. Uh, and I guess if you want to call that true love, fine. But I don't think like we're fated to meet that one person, and like that's you're going to spend the rest of our lives with. If we don't, we're going to be miserable. I think. There's a wide spectrum of like what you want out of a relationship. So even true love really depends on who you are and what you're looking for. So I would say that there's definitely healthy relationships and healthy people to be in a relationship with based on what you're looking for. But I don't think it's any like Disney fucking crap going on with that stuff. Well, since we're going to be practical then, uh, do you ever think that you'll consider marriage and maybe kids? No, I think... <laughs> Well, no, let's assume you didn't have a, a huge mountain of debt looming over here. It's not even that. Like, I have two. Like, I don't want children because I actually completely disapprove of how this world is run. I wouldn't want to subject anyone to it of my own volition. So I wouldn't bring anybody more else into this world because I don't think this is a world worth living in a lot of the times. I and mean, I think it's only going to get worse before it gets better. So the generation after me is going to have it way worse off than I am. So why would I, like, purposely bring someone into this world? Build up their hope as a child and then let the society crush them. So I'd never do that. Um, and I would not get married because I think marriage actually weakens relationships. Uh, because once you're married, it's like not finalized, but it's so much more complicated to split up with someone. So you have to stop trying. But we neither of us believe in marriage. Like if we did, we'd probably be married at this point, but we're not because we both don't believe in it. Uh, good thing that didn't work out because it didn't last. I'm going to ask this. You know, in the sort of MOP fandom, there's like a lot of other. I don't want to say other sorts of fandoms, but other, like, divisions of it. Like, you know, there's analysis, but then there's, you know, art, there's animation, there's music, and all that wonderful stuff. Recently, I got into the art community, and I'm just, like, expecting it to be kind of like the analysis community. But then I get into it, and suddenly, I'm, like, friends with Sugary Violet, and I'm like, everyone is so happy here. (laughs) There's no whining. There's no complaining. I zote. I would assume that the the artist <laughs> section would be the most miserable because they're all starving. Well, yeah, some of them, yeah, some of them are starving. Like I know some who are starving, but then there are others who are just like really happy. They're just drawing these random things just because they can, 
and we're all just like, there's no bitching about people for being cynical. There's no drama over what your opinion on the show is. There's just like, oh, I drew this wonderful thing. Oh, that's so cool. I'm going to draw you with it. And that's that was my experience. Mine was just happy sunshine rainbows. So I was just marveling at how there's no whining. But what's your experience with the other sides of the fandom? Because I know you do art, too. Yeah, I mean, I think that just kind of comes with the nature of the content. You know, I said this, we were actually talking about this a little bit in uh, the follow-up podcast that me, uh, Paleo, and Saberspark did about that video, the analysis of the analysis damage fandom. And I was, we were talking about how uh, for artists and musicians and stuff, all of those are a positive expression from the show. You know, like, you're not going to make a song about My Little Pony because you didn't like something about it. You know, you're going to do something because you liked it. So whenever someone draws a picture of My Little Pony, it's because, man, I really like this show and I want to express my love for it. Uh, when someone can do an analysis video, you can talk about things that are negative. And with the analysis community, your opinion is you. So it has to be projected way more directly than something like the artist. Like an artist might not like some part of the show, but that doesn't really come out in their work. They're just drawing pictures of what they do like. So I think it's just a much more kumbaya attitude because just the nature of, of the material being created there, you know? Because the, the yeah. question that, that Saber had asked is like, are people who, why is the analysis community so full of themselves? Because he felt like everyone had an ego. And my response to that was like, I think it kind of feels that way because your art is your opinion. So you have to be like confident and project it all over the place because that's what you're doing. So it's not really that like people are full of themselves, you know, I'm sure some people are. It's just that yeah. it feels that way because you have, you yourself and your thoughts is the product. Whereas, like, a musician and an artist or whatnot, they're doing something that's kind of outside of themselves. And so it's less conflict-ridden because there's no pain going around. And it's... Yeah. Analysis isn't for everybody, you know? And even even me, I'm just like, ugh, some of the, some of the bull crap that comes with it is just like, why? Why does this matter so much? So... I ask myself that every yeah, day. Yeah, sometimes I can understand, like, when you get into it, like, when your mind's in the mood and you just want to think critically and have a little discussion. Maybe I can see it, but there are other times where it's like, oh, let's see what the art side is doing and whip up my tablet, see what songs they're singing. I think you just, like, you can have an argument with somebody and not be mad at them. I remember I was talking with Digi, like, a couple months ago, or not even that, probably less than a month, two months ago, and we but video games and stuff. We got the topic of Guilty Gear XR, which is like the newest. Pony is the only fandom I've ever gotten into, but the closest I've ever gotten to getting to another fandom was Guilty Gear back in high school. Like, I really loved that game, and I loved, like, the world that they crafted and the characters and everything. Oh, and the sure. gameplay was great, too. So, like, when he, like, threw down saying, like, Guilty Gear sucks, like, I was like, hell no, you just, like, bitch slapped me personally. So we got into <laughs> it. But, like, it was bad. Like, we went out and, like, you know, like, the nine of a video game. Like, that's the dumbest <laughs> thing to hate someone over. But, like, at the time, it was just like, yo, fuck that shit. What do you mean this game is ugly? Like, get out. I mean, you really got to, like, dissociate, like, opinions on media from opinions on people. And I think for a lot of people, it's kind of difficult. That was really pathetic. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you, can you hear me now? I can. Uh, the, the original content creators lost their license to Guilty Gear. Uh, the, the, the new fighting game engine or whatever series that they went with was, was Blaze Blue. Did you ever check that out at all? I didn't play a bit of Blaze Blue. Um, I love wasn't Blaze big, Blue. Wasn't as big of a fan of Blaze Blue as I was. A, I wasn't a big fan of the time back in Blaze Blue. And I don't know. I, I just played Guilty Gear religiously for for years until when this new thing came around. I was like, why is Ragnar just like Soul, but just call something else? What's up with this? You're not Soul. Stop trying to be Soul. Who's this guy who shoots ice and freezes people? You're not Kai Kisk. Stop putting it into me, Kai Kisk. And I'm just like, whatever. It's the same thing, but different, you bastards. <laughs> so it felt like the redheaded stepchild of Guilty Gear to me, so I just never really got into it to the same degree. The, the core mechanics are really fun. I'm not going to die. Like, I always, I was, I had this like irrational hatred for the game for a while just because it's like, there's no more Guilty Gear because of you. And then they announced XR, and I didn't even know. My story, like, to understand how much I love XR and love Guilty Gear, I had no idea they were making a new game until like a little while ago. And my friend Hirosashi, he was like, oh yeah, you, you're making a new Guilty Gear. I'm like, oh, they're like remixing Accent Core again? Like, I don't care. It's like, no, no, no. There's a new game. I'm like, what? Oh, you mean there's, like the, there's the Final a Fight new series? Guilty Gear? Yeah, because they, they did, like, you know how they got a bajillion editions of Street Fighter 2 or whatever? Yeah. They did the same thing to Guilty Gear X2, the second one. There's, like, 15 versions of it. And so I was just like, whatever, they're going to, like, change Kai's moveset. I don't care. But they're like, no, this is a brand new game. And so I watched the, the, the reveal trailer of it and literally cried. I, like... Yeah. Oh, damn. Because I was just so, like, hype. And then they just come out and just, like, look how hard we tried. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm garbage. That's the I'm first scared. time I've heard that where someone's like, I suck complete ass, but I love this thing. It's just, it's so fun. You know, I love those games. My favorite games is I like third person, like hack and slash games and fighting games. Like first person shooters, yeah. eh, they're okay. They're fine. Whatever. Call of Duty, meh. Halo, eh, it's a little better. Um, whatever, you know, but no, like Devil May Cry, Ninja Gaiden, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, Guilty Gear x Street Fighter 4, King of Fighters. That's, that's my jam. Those are the games I like to play. There's something actually interesting earlier with the, uh, we were talking about fan divisions. There's also that in gaming. Cause I've, I played FPS and we've all got that message of like you kill someone on Xbox Live and on like Call of Duty and then you get this voice message of some screaming 10 year old saying, you faggot. No, no, faggot. I'm saying that he doesn't do the whole online thing really. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. You go over to a fighting game because I was playing Blaze Blue. There was some, I was fighting some girl in Germany or something and I got my ass kicked. And I get a message from... They'll, they'll do the Guilty Gear thing. It's like, it's back. And I'm like, yes! Because, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I really... I just hate Street Fighter. And Street Fighter is like the simple fighting game. Yeah. But like, King of Fighters is just like, you look at some of the, the combos and you're just like, what? What is this? So, I'm not good at it, but I really... I like the character design. I like the, the sprites a lot because like, they just keep recycling the Neo Geo sprites. Mm-hmm. Whereas like, some of those look a little bit better than the Super Nintendo kind of 16-bit arcade sprites that... Capcom recycled for the longest time. Dude, you spend like $120 in like physical quote unquote DLC on this game so you can have like a little AI guy fire for you. Oh, it's a bad night action figure. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, you people. You people. Now, when you say you people, <laughs> I'm good. Oh, I have one more question. So tell me, Oliver, are you also gay for Bridget? I think we're all gay for Bridget, let's be honest for a second. I was like, you know what? No one's going to bring this up. He's not going to know. Corp's not. And then I forgot about Peter. Just, you, that's an interesting question. You can tell me Corp afterwards. Was. Yeah. Google it, bitch. <laughs> oh, if you thought Samus, if you thought Samus revealing who, that she was a woman was a plot twist. This is no, what you Bridget need to is do. the real plot twist. You need Samus. to go turn off your adult filter. You need to take your sorry ass on down to rule 34. I, I await all the comments on this video if this makes it in there. It's like, what did you show me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to everyone who had to be subjected to that. Skipping through the video, like, different points. It's like, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. That's not Fuda. What? <laughs> <laughs> of course. What was I talking about? I completely shut down. I think down you're trying that. to end the, the Oh, podcast. yeah. I was about to see. I was, I'd was. like to thank you, Tom. I hope we weren't too much of a migraine. No. Uh, no oh, yeah. I appreciate it. Oh, there was one more little thing. I oh, I should say for the record that Crown Prince could totally be me up. Was that like a question? I was watching an episode with Crown Prince and I was brought up like, could you take Tommy Oliver? I was like, dude, Crown Prince is <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for have you whispering that with her slapping an animation of her beating you around, I don't know. Maybe we can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Probably could. I want to say I'm a lover or not a fighter, but not really a lover either. I just kind of <laughs> exist. <laughs> not proficient in either. Just like, eh. Well, if you, if you ever want to come back for an interview as a co-host, we'd love to have you, Tom. Sounds good, man. All right. Great talking with you, man. Take care. You too. Adios. He cuts the call off literally, 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 fucking literally the second he says goodbye. He doesn't give any of us a chance to say goodbye. He doesn't give any of us a chance to say anything we might be doing. It's like, fuck you, call's over. What are you playing? Well, here's the thing. I'm playing Battlefield 4, but I'm so fascinated by how the game works, but it's so glitchy that it's amusing. (laughs) How's your game going, Tom? Not too bad. Went and did tech stuff today, so... Yeah. That was fun. I got an appointment for that in uh, March. Did um, did you get hit with uh, Patreon? I heard a lot of people weren't expecting the uh, 1099 and everything. That's what Jesse was saying, at least. Yeah, the 1099 stuff is just... Did you have to worry about uh, AdSense at all, or...? Yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I made way too much money on AdSense, because I don't remember ever getting, it's like, you have $2,000 in AdSense. I'm like, I don't think that that's true. I think that's a lie. But <laughs> I have no way to not prove it. So, yeah, <laughs> they already reported it, so, oh well. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, Finding wait, out wait. about all this tax stuff as it happens, and I'm just, like, weaving. This is a interesting question, which I probably, yeah, I, I won't ask there. Uh, for Google AdSense, they don't count, like, the money they take away from you, do they, for tax reasons? They don't no, take I don't believe so. Yeah. Well, I mean, they take, I think it's 45% of ad revenue. Oh, so yeah. So it's a 55-45 split in the creator's favor. Oh, no. I'm like saying, like, for instance, like, uh, 
Hasbro decides to take the entirety of your thing, you're not still going to get hit for the taxes, are you? No, no, no that no. would be a hell of a racket, wouldn't it? <laughs> Dude, <No. laughs> you're not getting any of the money, but you're going to have to pay tax on it. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be bullshit. I, it would be kind of impressive, but yes, it would be bullshit. I wouldn't put it That's when I go down though. to Google's office with like a shotgun and just be like, excuse me, excuse me. What do you think you're doing? I'm already getting charged 30% tax, so I'm already like ready to go to the White House, but I mean, the NSA is listening, so I can't really plan it over the phone. <laughs> so, I'm go- so to my understanding, I should skip over that what do you like about America question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, Anthony, Anthony, you, you, you're self-employed for a little while, and, and you quickly, like, you know, get a new uh, look on things Yeah, as far as taxes go. I'm waiting. One day I'm going to get somebody on one of these podcasts when they say, tell me about America, and they're going to go on. It's going to be all hyper-positive. One day. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to be me. Yeah. I'm, not even, I'm just, like, such a political radical. that it's I thought just... for sure it would be Robin. Nope. <laughs> how how are you a political? Ra- do you mind if I ask? Because I'm a bit of a political radical too, but I, I, most people aren't the way I am. I'm kind of the, the dude who's like, we should just get rid of the monetary system entirely and base a, a society around aligning our actions in accordance with natural law and have all of our decisions about how society is made decreed by like science and scientific reasoning instead of political opinion, since politicians aren't educated in any of the issues they're making laws about. So I think having some democratic process from an uneducated uh, voting base on top of politicians elected to offices when they don't actually are educated about anything that their policies are going to be affecting is an incredibly ineffective way to front a society. Okay. So I think we should just get rid of the entire thing and just start from scratch. The Pretty things that solve was... problems in the world are technology um, and, and scientific reasoning. I think that should be the central point of our society. We should have, you know, the smartest scientists, most intelligent doctors, the most well-trained psychiatrists in the highest offices of our political system, quote-unquote political system, because they're the ones who understand human problems. They're the ones who understand social problems. They're the ones who understand technical problems. You know, these are the people who are equipped to solve these issues, not politicians who learn about how to make laws, irregardless of what those laws are actually affecting. Okay. Well, you know, that almost happened in real life once. Where's that, Peter? There was a movement, and I think it was in the States, and it was, I think it went until like 1949 is when it died out. Uh, It was called the Technocratic Movement or something. So It was something like that, but it's really similar to what uh, Tommy just said. Tom, whichever you prefer. Yes. Whatever, you can call me butthole, I don't really care. <laughs> I'll probably know you're talking about me. Oh. <laughs> call you but I'm just saying, dude, what you're talking about almost sort of happened at one time. Almost. Yeah, well, you know, the powers that be wouldn't like that very much. Yeah, I think it was like there was a party for it, but it, it was like something was voted down that prevented it from coming up. Yeah. Maybe. That happened to me every night, man. It's terrible. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think the microphone would pick that up. Good, it's a good test. Good test. Yeah. If you're curious, I'm a secessionist. Was that a yeah. bad pun you set him up for? Huh? <laughs> you asked him if he was curious. I said, was that a bad oh, pun? Oh, no. Well, that's a good pun. <laughs> I, no, I wasn't. Here you go again. I'm like, what, th- thanks, Corpulent. You stole the joke I've been building up to for like about a month now. You just stole it from yourself, man. I didn't even oh. think about it. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. I beat that to death. Oh. Peter was saying, oh, how, many, how, how many times are you going to tell that? As many as I can. Nope, can't call him Peter. He's in the call already. <laughs> Try and yank Dr. Wolf in two weeks in a row. <laughs> I'm sure he'll appreciate that. Nah. Um, like, you know how he talks in his videos? Yeah. He talks like that in real life. I'm not shocked at all. But it's weird, and there's something unnerving about it. <laughs> uh, Licky said he's going to be here. Oh, yeah. I'm just paranoid, you know? Oh. Well. I like having plan A, B, C, and D, you know? Well, worst comes to worst. I think we're doing a three-way. Four-way? Yeah, four-way. <laughs> See, like, for example, uh, the political thing right there. I could probably throw that tech that on somewhere towards the back end. Man, if I know this was going to be the show, I'd try to be more articulate. I'm sitting here, it's like, oh, this, this thing. <laughs> no, no, I think you sounded fine. I've, like, written it out before and sounded, like, 10 million times more intelligent. <laughs> well, it's supposed to, you know, get, get, get the real people, not versus, like, this is me handing in my thesis statement. <laughs> I, need to, I need to learn how to speak as a thesis statement constantly. Oh, crap, no, this person doesn't belong here. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? That that, that was just some weird random asshole. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm like, oh boy. Was that accidentally on purpose like last time? No. No, that was not meant to be a Toon Critic moment. <laughs> <laughs> Ta 
Tom, what do you think of Toon Critic, by the way? I don't know much about the guy, to be honest. Oh, okay. I, I, we'd had heard rumors that a lot of people from the Horseshoe Crew didn't like him. I mean... Because he was like, oh, you don't think I could come in on the Tommy one? And I was like, are you fucking serious, man? At the last minute, you want to squeeze your... Now, all of a sudden, it's suddenly becoming more appealing. <laughs> <laughs> Now that Licky's not showing up, I really would have preferred fucking Looney the tune. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, there he is. Something, what's up? We're 15 minutes away from being in. Well, Licky <laughs> said he's coming. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, when it's kickoff time, it's kickoff time. That's all there is to it. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm sorry, Tom, if you were looking forward to Crown Prince, I tried to ask her if she wanted to come back again. <laughs> she said she was busy. Too busy for me. I get it. That's fine. No, she's like, I just have to pass this time. And I was like, oh. She, I was, I was expecting. Yeah, I was, I was expecting Tommy to just throw his hat off and say, "You lied, you fucker," and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, Peter, you're the one who has to do that later on when Goldie and Key show up. <laughs> oh yeah, this is rehearsal. Okay. Oh go. yeah, you're you're in trouble, buddy. You you promised them. Do you want to come on limbo with Crown Prince? And I didn't. Me? I didn't. Oh promise yes, you them did. Oh yes, you did, Peter. I, I've got that on tape. <laughs> I never said the words, I promise. I said, do you want to come on with Crown Prince? And he just said, can we reschedule? Okay. He didn't say, can we reschedule with Crown Prince? <laughs> oh, I think the implication was pretty straightforward. <laughs> oh, yeah, but that's implications. You can imply anything you want, bro. <laughs> I'm imagining them both sitting there with folded arms like the biggest butthurt expression on God's green earth. <laughs> Peter, we're, we're having a it's word. me, yeah. and they like me enough to let me get away with shit. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> No, dude, dude, I've been, I've been in enough calls with them to, to know that they're like, oh, Peter, we still love you. And then and they're just like, oh, okay. Yeah. They'll just be like, oh, oh, well, let's have fun. Okay. Yeah. I know with Key, her incentive to join was, you know what? You'll be there. Let's have fun. Yeah, okay. That's good. Oh, no, it's a tweet by Mark Leggett. I don't know how popular he is, but he's like, uh, feel strange, Mr. Bond? That's because I laced your martini with a measles vaccine. You're yeah. autistic now. I, I threw that in the rift after you showed it to me. <laughs> uh, Do you think that's appropriate? Yeah, Peter sent it to me. <laughs> it's the automatic cure-all to get off the hook. Peter would never intentionally do anything offensive. <laughs> right? <laughs> he can't be offensive because he's Peter. He had a re If it was offensive, he'd have a reason behind it. Yeah. <laughs> a reason that redeems him and makes him sympathetic. Say, M Mr. Oliver, are you, are you a, um, how, how do I ask this? Are you a Power Rangers fan? Yes. I was, are you looking forward to the, the reboot that they're spitting out there soon or? The movie? Yeah. Have they been talking about? Um, I mean, I'm going to reserve judgment. I'm the fanboy in me is just like, yeah, but like the logical part of me is like, this could be like Hollywood crap, just like everything else they try and reboot. But well, it's, it's not my, uh, Michael Bay this time, I believe, right? <laughs> I, I don't think so. Yeah, I, and I know Jason David Frank wants to be involved in some way, so I feel like if he's involved in some way, that I'll have much more hope. We will see. <clears throat> I think Saban's like directly involved in it too, right? Not entirely sure. I, don't know. I feel like I I remember reading a statement somewhere from Jason David Frank saying that like he doesn't feel that Saban owes him anything, but because he's been so supportive of the franchise for so long, he would hope that if they are doing a film, that they would at least offer to have him involved in some way because he would jump on it. So I don't know. Like, yeah, we'll just... not, not that Saban is like a great track record in terms of like quality writing if like you know 20 years of that franchise are any indication but you know <laughs> at least it'll be genuine if they're involved yeah I, I was just asking Corp about what if he was hyped about the Power Rangers oh, and he okay, seems like he's cautiously optimistic yeah don't worry I'm not going to talk about that at length I just figured I'd ask him I asked this question a little bit but it's like am I the only kid who didn't grow up with Power Rangers I well, was okay I'm a huge fan of Power Rangers probably to the degree I am now and I'm not even a huge fan I'm like a casual fan I'm more of a bigger fan of like the, the tokusatsu genre in general and Power Rangers is just like a part of that but I love it so much because I was denied it as a kid my mom was like this is too violent you can't watch it and all the kids around me were like this is the best thing ever so like when I finally got uh... I was just like I'm reclaiming this shit that I missed when that came <laughs> out like, you still watch Power Rangers? I'm just like, dude, it's so cool. I missed it. <laughs> when, that, when that came out, I was practically an adult already. So, oh, yeah. No, yeah, sorry. I, I, I just was... imagine Tommy Oliver when he's like, "It's so cool. I'm watching it," and he's just like dressed up in a novelty Power Rangers outfit <laughs> as he's telling these if people it, off. If it would have shipped on time, my when I in 2013 when I was working at uh, Whole Foods, they had one on Halloween. You could come in dressed as a costume. I wanted to buy the Tommy Oliver Green Ranger costume, just come in like that because. Usually I worked up in sign making, 
uh, because I did like graphic design stuff up there. But at the end of every day, I would go down and I would change all the signs. I have to get on a ladder and do it. So I'd just be dressed in full costume with mask, just taking all the signs down. It would have been the best thing ever, but it wouldn't ship in time. So I didn't get to do it. And it made me very sad because I would have been like my legacy.